Hello and welcome to uh, another look at the newer features in the 3.2 release of Savage Worlds for Fantasy Grounds 2. Today I'm going to focus on the classic rule set um, and uh, in particular mostly on the combat tracker but before that I'm just going to a couple of new features that have snuck in at the very last second. If we go to the PCs tab first thing you can see some of these characters now have uh, and he's showing up, others don't. This is just sort of at the end of every session you've now got the option or even before the session starts just to reset the bennies. If you right mouse button on a player, reset bennies automatically gives them free bennies. But it's a bit cleverer than that, just free bennies there. If I go to Tina McLeod here and reset the bennies, she gets five and that is because she has got the great luck edge. Nice bit of programming in there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to pause this and set up some extra characters and uh, kick off a combat. So I've added four characters in. Um, these are characters that if anyone's played on any of my Savage Saturdays when I was doing the modern horror games you should recognize. And so what we're going to do is we'll set up a combat. So uh, what first things first, we need some adversaries. I think good old scarecrows will do, being near Halloween. Uh, so I'll just click on init and it will open up a combat tracker. The new version, the combat tracker has been so completely rewritten uh, four times I think since we started playtesting this that the um, functionality is more and more closely resembling the 4th um, edition rule set and one of the limitations of that is the ability to pre-build combat trackers is not in 3.2. I suspect we may well add it, it may well be added in in 3.3 but at the time being the combat tracker you have to build it on the fly. So we'll just add the PCs in as normal. Oops, Dave's already there. And we'll add in the scarecrows. Now, in my last time I did a video on the combat tracker, if you remember I said grouping didn't work. And I, so I had to drag them all in separately. That's not the case now. You can just drag them and drop them on the new grouping icon. One little feature I found that's rather nice is you don't you only have to drag it once. After that, you can just drag the top entry on top. Let's close that up so you can see there's uh, three additional scarecrows at the moment. One, two, three. Let's, let's make it six in total. So you've got a, one scarecrow there and another five. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll open up an image. What we'll do is we'll just have a little area here on the green and we'll put uh, Big Dave on, we'll put Tina on, we'll put Ray on, and we'll put Koyung on over there. And then what I'll do is um, I'll add on the scarecrows. Right, one thing I did notice, and it would have helped on my placements, is all these scarecrows are just numbered scarecrow. Uh, this is due to a change in how the numbering works, and actually it's a good time to show off the new preferences options. So this again is quite comprehensive now. Um, whether or not the uh, mouse wheel will uh, edit, uh, edit most of the fields. Most fields are now default to locked unless you hold down control. You can turn that off. Um, there are auto num NPC numbering. It's off at the moment, hence the fact all the uh, scarecrows are not numbered. Append will just do them sequentially. My personal favourite is random. And I always smile when people panic when they see zombie number 275 turn up. Um, Delt cards announcements, you can either set debrief or verbose. So, if, uh, one trick I found with verbose is if it's turned on, it will name things that are hidden on the combat tracker. So, brief is usually better. Grouped entries, inherit values, I'm not sure what that one does if I'm honest. Ring bell on player turn, damage type, dice tower. Now, anyone who's played on, on fourth edition will know that. The dice tower, very nice bit of functionality showing up on my screen but it's put a dice tower on the player screen. I suspect if I resize the screen it would show up. Uh, make the combat tracker active the combat tracker on GM voice. This one can be very useful and other times it can be very annoying. Basically whoever is the current combat tracker anything the GM does uh, is stated as being that character. Uh, show GM dice rolls. Aha! Now that's... Ah uh, yeah. yes that makes sense. Sorry. 
An extra functionality of the tower. If basically dice rolls are turned off, the GM doesn't need the tower um, because all his dice rolls are hidden. But if you turn this on so all the GM's dice rolls are visible, if as the GM you want to roll hidden dice, rather than having to come in here, turn it off, roll the dice, come in here, turn it on, or like I used to have a couple of shortcuts saying slash die hide and slash die reveal, now all you do is you turn it on and any roll you want hidden you drop on the GM's tower. Portraits in chat, I should do, I always turn that one on. Right, so that's the preferences dealt with. That's the combat tracker dealt with. The It's, it's going to get a bit crowded here on my screen, so I'm going to have to minimise some stuff at some point. So then we'll share the combat tracker out to the players. And on the map, all the scarecrows are hidden. And on the combat tracker, I can see them, but the players can't. Uh, a lot of the functionality from the 4th edition rule sets has... Uh, 4th edition D&D &D rule sets I should say has been added in so now you can globally turn on everyone's combat values you can globally turn on everyone's pace and reach, you can globally turn on or off if anyone's got effects and if I can position this in a subtle way so you can see the map, the combat tracker and the players tracker, if I click this it turns on or globally turns on the visibility of all foes and now as you can see on the player's combat tracker they can see all the scarecrows and likewise if I turn it off they vanish again uh, the known unknown factor is completely separate again so if I turn on the, vis the visibility of the scarecrows but set them to unknown then all of, the all of a sudden all the scarecrows are set to unknown with a parry toughness blank or I can set it to the which shows full values which is the default or just the name so you can see the name but the parry values are hidden likewise um, these functionality cascades if I set it up here it sets it for all the uh, sub entries likewise if I want to make them friendly scarecrows I only have to drop one if I want to add a uh, make one scarecrow hostile then you would drag it to the specific one make him unknown for example but nine times out of ten you'll just stick with the uh, setting them all the same uh, you can um, you can see how many bennies they've got which you can add to so we've got the bad guy we've got the bad guys in we've got the combat map we start the combat up nothing unusual there and we'll basically whiz down the combat to the scarecrows now if I show up the player view at the same time as uh, so you can see on the player map scarecrows show up and as I move down I'll move the player combat tracker back so you can see as I move down you can see it scrolls through the scarecrows and then automatically closes it up on both the player sheet and the gem sheet and moves on to the next player so as a player Koi Young targeted this scarecrow and if I expand the combat tracker you can see that that particular scarecrow has been targeted and in the combat we'll assume the scarecrow has been killed and all I have to do is right mouse button delete the entry and the scarecrow is removed from the scarecrow is removed from the map removed from the combat tracker something some people have asked and it's it was a question and in all fairness it was a problem at some, earlier on um, what happens if someone targets the top holder of the group well it absolutely works fine you just delete them they're removed and all the other scarecrows move up so as you can see there's no problems at all there uh, shaken and incapacitated are now icons which I personally find a lot more intuitive and friendly to click on uh, as a um, player you can spend bennies on players behalf I'm not sure why you'd want to do that and as a GM you can obviously still spend bennies with a drag and drop and so as you can see the combat tracker will move through with no problem at all we'll go down through them the foes, absolutely no problems at all there. Some e more eagle-eyed uh, GMs might notice the tick for being on hold has vanished. That's because in an attempt to try and make it more intuitive, uh, the functionality has been changed. What you now do is you right mouse button on card and put the player on hold. The card fades out on your screen and it fades out on the player screen. So then when you move down, the combat tracker, they keep the same card to remove someone from hold you would just right mouse button again and take them off hold the combat tracker deals with the edges that deal extra cards without any problems likewise if for some reason you want a different card to someone you just right mouse button and deal them a new card 
will automatically update. Um, I've done effects before, but I think they're very useful and it's worth going over again. If on Koi Young's turn, who's a, a, a chi using martial artist, she casts deflection on herself without a raise, so it's only going to last three rounds. And with a duration of uh, a duration of three rounds, and each round it will go down by one. So as we move round the combat tracker, as soon as it gets to Queer Young, it automatically decreases by one. If I close this map off, we'll, what we'll do is we'll delete the, zom uh, the zombies, the scarecrows, to speed things up, and we'll move down. You see it's Kiri Young again, and there we go. And the GM's told when the deflection on Ku Young expires. Um, at the moment, to my knowledge at least, if when it expires the player wants to spend another power point to maintain it, I don't know of any way short of actually re-entering the entry to make it go again. When you finish with the combat tracker or you want to create a new one, you just right mouse button, delete record, and it empties out the whole combat tracker and that basically is the new functionality of the combat tracker um, hopefully it's been informative thank you very much